welcome back to Studio Lou. It's Cindy and so today is Wednesday and I just have a little thrift haul video. I um, had to go to my local recycling center today to drop off some donations. It's kind of like a thrift store but it's more of like a community kind of recycling store where you know you bring things you take things um you, they're not free it is like a thrift store but it's got a little bit of a different angle in that it's um not like a for-profit and it's not for um a lot of social objectives except for environmental ones so yeah it's a really cool store and you can always find or often find a lot of great books there so that is primarily what i have today so i found this book um richard scary's busy busy World world and it's not in the best condition and I I know I've already done a whole series of Richard Scarry journals but I probably mentioned in my videos about them um, I'm a huge fan of Richard Scarry and I actually don't have this book and when I got it um, the woman who was working at the checkout was really cute and she said you know oh this is one of my favorite books when I was a child this is the one about you know London and I and I said yeah it's it's really cute and so um Inside is this hilarious like kid art by a kid named Michael Kempton. So Michael Kempton, if you're out there, I've got your hilarious like Joyeux Noël Garfield art from Christmas time. Um, I love it so much. <laughs> and it's got kind of like half English, half French. J'aime tu penses to it, le best person de la whole we all wide wide world uh, X's and O's je t'aime so it, there's a little I guess these are lips and a little heart with an arrow through it okay <laughs> honestly best part of the day right <laughs> it's so cute so this is the um this is a really cool like illustrated book lots of animals if you're not familiar with Richard Scarry I suggest you do a deep dive because he is an incredible illustrator like honestly I'm so excited to find this it's all like European um, countries and references Rome and Greece and Poland and Finland so it's all like European um, stuff so yeah I really really am happy to have this I think it's so cute I'm gonna keep this right in there and probably just treasure this book a while <laughs> So next is, I found this old book. It's an Audubon Conservation and Nature Activities. So I thought this would make a nice, like maybe a lap book kind of style journal or, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Could just be a nice journal too. Um, I was also just interested in the book itself. Like it has this cool help wanted. Canada needs the help of every person who is a conser conservation minded. Um, and it was like a, a call for subscribing to the Audubon Society of Canada. So pretty cool. Very cool. Um, it doesn't say what year. I'm trying to see what year this is from. But it's quite old. It looks kind of like, I don't know, 50s? Yeah, 1952. Very cool. And then the book itself it's just um it's photographs illustrations i think it's all black and white but there's a lot of good information um if like me you're just doing a lot of nature study this is nice let's go to the seashore so this will probably have a bit of a combined use for me i'll probably read large parts of it um and then things like this i'll probably use in journals yeah so it's a really great book Okay, so next I have this group of Rand McNally elf books from 1958 and 1959. So this is the funny hat. And it is kind of falling apart a little bit, but that's okay for my purposes. And then the storybook for little tots. This one has really amazing end papers and illustrations. Um, very cute. Happy holidays and other fun days around the year. This is more um, holiday centric. 
And then Jack and Jill and the other nursery rhymes. This one again, nice end papers and nice illustrations. So, um, yeah, I wasn't really that familiar with Jack and Jill books, but I just thought they were very cute. And then I found a little golden book. Um, I collect little golden books. I think I have another one actually in here. Um, I do. So I actually found two scores today in the little golden book world. Um, most little golden books are pretty common, like a lot of them are common, um, but these two aren't. And so I know I don't have this one. I think I don't even think I have this one. I know I have another Captain Kangaroo one, but I don't think I have either of these. And that's pretty awesome because I have like hundreds of little golden books. So this is um, Marge's Little Lulu and her magic tricks. And it has this little... Um, fold out here and I'm not exactly sure how it was supposed to work but it's really neat like I think there were Kleenexes yeah things to do with Kleenex tissues so I guess that there were Kleenex tissues under here and then inside the book I imagine there's yeah there's like how to make dolls and all different things and then of course a story about Kleenexes so I'm guessing it was like a partnership with Kleenex um, 1954. And then this is Captain Kangaroo. And I know I have another one, but I believe the color cover is yellow and it's like a side, um, like a television, like theme side story. And there's a stamp here, Leonard Slater. I don't know what that is, but I love Captain Kangaroo. And it's really cute. So I don't think I'll be doing a whole lot with these other than just adding them to my collection, but I wanted to share because they're really cute. And it's always exciting to find something cool for your collection. Then um, something not journal related and collection related. For those of you who follow my other YouTube channel, Specularia, this is maybe a little bit more um, specific to that channel, but I found a Care Bear, and he's a cute, like, 80s Care Bear. Um, let's see. 1983. Super cute. And then, uh, back to books and stuff. I found this little Peter Cotton tail, and I like the illustrations inside. Um, it was part of like a collection that you could get. Really cute uh, drawings. And then I found just this book I think I will read with my daughter called How to Hide an Octopus and Other Sea Creatures. And I may end up using it as part of um, ocean themed journals that I'll be working on eventually. And then this again is like probably a book I'll read with my daughter, um, All Creatures. And it's just nice illustrations of animals good book to read with kiddos. And this again is another like good book to read with children and it's seasons change in the natural world and so it's all about seasons. It's got some really great photos in it but not really like for a journal. I'll be reading this with my daughter for sure. And then this I found, um, The Wind in the Willows Freeze. So I don't really know what this was all about, but it's from 1982. And it's got like some different, um, they're like these accordion stories, Mr. Toad, Toad's Adventures. And they're all like basically like pages. So they could be used as signatures in a journal that's Wind in the Willows themed maybe. I do have some other Wind in the Willows stuff that I had um, considered like making journals from. So this probably will come in very handy. Mr. Badger at home. And I like the like linear scratch style of the illustrations. This big, it looks really nice. So even the folder would be great inside a journal. 
So yeah, I found that. <clears throat> and then Animal Tracks. This is another one that I want to just read with my daughter. It's about different animals and their prints in the sand. And then I found another Richard Scary. And this is a French animal dictionary. Another one that I didn't have. And it's really nice. So yeah, I, um, I think I have the English version of this or something a little similar, maybe not exactly because Richard Scary books, there are many of them and some of them share like um, the exact same like themes and pages, but I don't have that one and definitely not a French one. And then I found this gift book of nursery rhymes and I got it for the illustrations they're really neat. Some of them nicer than others. But um, yeah, lots of really nice illustrations. And then this little book that I got mainly just for the cover. I really liked the cover. It's called Four Great Tragedies. I don't know if it's like a Reader's Digest maybe. I think Reader's Digest released something like this. No, it's just um, a Shakespeare book. I just recall that Reader's Digest released like some classic collector stuff. Yeah, so it's a nice little, nice little book. Sorry if it sounds like thumpy upstairs. It sounds like there's some elephants upstairs. It's my my daughter probably running around. <laughs> and then I found this copy of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, it is illustrated, but really I'm all about the cover. That's what I came here for, the cover. Um, and I will likely cover this image and just use this beautiful end papers and cover. And um, I'll probably go through like the illustrations. Some of them may be useful, others not so much. Um, I'm not a big fan of this story or this um, author. I just really wanted the cover, to be honest. A lot of the illustrations, although there are some color ones, they're kind of, eh, not my thing. But a few of them might be good, but really it's all about this golden cover. Then I got a pad of construction paper. So I'm always happy to find like paper goods and stuff at this store because it means that it's being used up instead of wasted in the landfill and that's a good thing. And then I also got this copy, another Robert Louis Stevenson, A Child's Garden of Verses. And this is from a school in the township of North York um, from a grade four class. See if it has a year 1961 so I thought there would be some um, nice poems in here probably nice verses to use in journals and probably some great illustrations of course yeah Sorry I missed making a video yesterday. It was my daughter's birthday and it was just a really busy day. A really fun day though. We had a really fun day. And then I found this cute book. So this is my favorite Mother Goose Rhymes book and it's actually like a lacing card like style book. Um, and I think like the whole thing is a board book so it would be great for covers. Some of the pages are ripped like this one but I thought a few of them are salvageable like um to make journal covers out of. This lamb is so cute. And little Bo Peep is very cute. And those could actually kind of go together. Maybe Mary had a little lamb and little Bo Peep, I could do like a lamb journal or maybe a knitter's journal. And there's Baba Black Sheep. So yeah, a few cute boards. And V is for verses. So I think these probably all came from the same household of like people who had children at a certain time where these were the kind of stories that they they were read. 
This is, um, I don't know what year this book is. The acknowledgements are from the 20s to the 40s. It's just a book of poems and illustrations and like it's alphabetical so that could be really nice for like different kinds of um oh there's the elf in the dormouse I just read that with my daughter because we're studying fungi this week and last week so yeah there's lots of good stuff in here I think I have a few more. Yep. So this book I got just because it's an old copy of Pinocchio. Um, and I like the cover. The cover is really cool. And the end papers are really cool too. So this I think um, Wedge Cornwallis Drive. I don't know if that's here in Ontario or not. I don't, I don't know. But it, it was at one point a library book, I think. And I didn't even check if it had illustrations or not. It has some nice black and white ones. And nice big um, words, which can often be good for like, you know, cutting out a, a verse that you want to put into a journal. It's nice if they're a little bit bigger. have one more book um, and this is just an amazing cover and it is Morant Chinese Love Tales so um, I didn't even look at the inside really it's all about uh, the cover for me so it's a book of uh, love tales so who knows how spicy this one gets or how weird it gets Eastern Shame Girl I don't know <laughs> <laughs> probably not gonna read this one um, it's really about the cover then I got some textile stuff some fabric and some cool trim and I don't know if I'll put that into some weaving um, and I just really like this fabric so I think I think it's a dress that has been like I don't know if it's been ripped or cut or just never sewn together now that I look at this, I didn't even really realize it was like an actual, maybe a garment. <laughs> so, yeah. The front looks like it's a dress. <laughs> Sorry, this is like too big for um, all being in frame. But I just want to see what the heck it is. Here we go. So it looks like they started to cut a dress. And they got like... The back, yeah, so there's the back, there we go, yeah, they cut the whole dress out, but then they just didn't sew it together, maybe? Okay, that's really funny, um, I might actually just sew this together and give it to my daughter, because it's a dress. I was going to use it for, like, something, but now I'm thinking, like, it's actually really beautiful. And it's a totally vintage fabric and a vintage dress. It's like this like thicker kind of, I don't know, the fabric on the back, it has like this interesting stitching that goes back and forth. So yeah, that's going to become something. <laughs> Probably a dress now that I'm looking at it. And that is everything for today. So that is my thrift haul. Um, actually quite a big one. Um, I guess I'm anticipating that we won't be able to do a lot of thrifting soon. Hold on one second. There we go. So yeah, I, I'm anticipating that probably because the um, infection rate here has gone up a bit, that we won't be doing a lot of um, thrifting or any other kind of going out, but we'll see. So I'm just going to throw these books in their box. Okay. There we go. So I just like to clean up my mess before I keep going here. <laughs> Cause I need some space to show you what I did yesterday. Um, whoops, that's why we clean up. 
so I have all these journals that I started. I'll just, what I've done is I've obviously, I showed you the covers, they were stitched. Um, and then inside I've got the 15 pages that I'm going to be putting inside of them. And I've put them in the order that I want them, but I haven't trimmed them down to size yet. So I think I'll be using as my guideline, this page, um, which fits perfectly. That's exactly how I want it to fit. It could get a little wider if it wanted to, but truly I think that's perfect. So this will be my guide to start cutting my pages. Um, and I might, I don't know if I want to do that on camera because it might not be all that fun to watch, but basically I just get it my guillotine and that will be what I'm doing for the next while. So these pages are going to be roughly five and a half by eight and a half. Um, so that's really what I'm going to be doing. So maybe I'll cut a few of them just because. So yeah, yesterday was really nice. Um, my daughter has turned four years old and she had a lot of um we were lucky to have grandparents here she got a lot of really nice presents and one of the things that we got for both kids because my son turns a year old in a week we got them a wagon so we are hoping to get out and have some time in the wagon maybe today it's a little bit warmer today it was very very cold though yesterday we actually had gone for a walk the other day and well we tried to but there was like this torrential all of a sudden torrential windstorm and so we got to our destination to walk like 15 minutes away and then things just got like really hairy outside <laughs> so i decided um maybe not so sometimes you just gotta turn around in life um yeah so I think I will just cut a few of these while I have a little bit of time to do so. It's been a very long day at work. I had um, a meeting and I was trying to work on other things because it's kind of one of those things where I probably wasn't needed in this meeting at all. But sometimes people in my kind of job, we just were the host for other people to talk to one another. And that's absolutely what this meeting was all about. And so. I just sat there and listened to people like install software and explain things to each other that I don't need to know and yeah it was a uh, quite a fun experience <laughs> sarcasm so that's what that was and I was just trying to like work on my email at the same time and just get other things done so I got a really early early start to my day today though because um my kiddos were pretty manageable today, so I started working at like seven o'clock to just try to get a bunch of things done in the morning. Um, so I would hopefully have a little bit of time to just do what I wanna do today. And then I got to ship orders. So if you have ordered anything from my shop, it has shipped today and I have let you know um, on Etsy that is done. I have all these like chores that I need to do, these errands to run. I went to the bank. Everything was very weird when I went to the bank. Um, there's like a blue light that flashes at a bank when it's been broken into. And so that light was flashing when I went to the bank today. And there was, um, someone sleeping inside in the lobby which is fine it's like what happens but then there were also people in the bank who like worked there so it was just a really weird sort of combination of things going on I didn't really I didn't really know what to think so I just said hello to the gentleman who was sleeping sort of hanging out there and went inside and um, did my banking at the machine really quickly and then made my way and um thankfully i don't have to go to the bank a whole lot unless i am doing what i was doing today depositing foreign currency because that's not something that we can do yet with our bank anyways 
online. Though I do really enjoy the technology of being able to like, just if you have a check from someone, you can just take a photograph of it and then it will get deposited. But it has to be in Canadian funds for that to happen. So it is what it is. Now this morning I got up very, very early. I actually did not sleep really much at all last night. I don't know. I was worrying, worrying endlessly about my husband because his allergies are very bad. And sometimes like I just worry about things unnecessarily. Um, he's fine, but he's just having bad allergies right now. He's had like the worst fall allergies ever this year. Like he's always had some kind of seasonal allergies, but not usually in the fall. But I don't know, something has bloomed this year or it's where we live or something. And um, his allergies have just been very bad. So I'm hoping they get better because I just, it's hard not to be able to breathe that well. And your nose is all stuffy and your sinuses are swollen. And of course, nowadays, you know, you never want to look like you're sick because everybody gets worried that there's something more going on than there is. And though I am starting to feel really positive about um, the discussions about vaccines that are happening. Let's see where that goes. That'll be nice. Eight and a half. Let's see where that takes me here. Yep. Then what I want to do is just trim. This is the my my digital, my own digital that um I accidentally printed them a little too small, but I like using them as the center of signatures at this size. It's kind of a nice little oopsie, nice little surprise on the inside. There we go. I just have to refold that evenly. <laughs> So when I woke up this morning, I was very sleepy, but I did watch a bit of YouTube. I watched some videos and then just kind of got on with my day. Okay, so that is one. And then we'll just check and make sure that everything fits. Sometimes, depending on the amount of papers you have, you might need to trim. And I don't this time, everything is inside. So we're all good. So that will be ready to be sewn in. Then I have all these scraps to deal with. I'll deal with them later though. I have uh, all the journals right here. So I will cut maybe one more and then I will call it quits for today. Because I think I'm probably hitting 40 minutes. So I just want to trim the edges off of this. This is actually a digital from Victoria Designs. And I didn't um, resize my print job. Sometimes people automatically resize them to be full screen, but sometimes they don't and that's fine. And that one is like my template, but I don't really need my template. a little bit shorter. I 
wish I can refold this to make it a little longer. There we go. And by five and a half. Also yesterday we got lots of stuff done in the house because my dad is like really good at fixing everything and so he came and fixed a bunch of things. We had a pipe that was leaking here in my studio and we had it sort of duct taped, um, duct -taped up for a while to just uh, keep it from causing any damage. And um, so my dad fixed that yesterday. He replaced the pipe completely all the way up to the upstairs sink where the leak, um, well, where the problem kind of started because the pipe just developed this long crack in it. So as it turns out, it's basically, it was part of some kind of a faulty pipe that had a seam and these kind of pipes shouldn't have seams. And so that was just, I guess, um, at the time my house was built, it was an issue that, you know, these things, they get reported over time and that's what happened. But I mean, it lasted for a long time, that pipe, and now, only now is it showing its problems. So no damage was done other than essentially we had to cut some drywall out of the wall, which we're going to now replace and then replace the pipe. It, it hadn't um, been a very big leak, so it didn't really cause much damage. The only weird thing is that because centipedes come out of the drains, they do. That's why you often see them in your bathtub. They were um, coming into my studio. So I had four centipedes in my studio and I'm not a big fan of them. They just like, I don't know, they creep me out, but they're actually very beneficial bugs to have in your house or around your house because they get rid of other bugs that you don't want to have around, um, even more so. And they don't bite. They are very gentle. So I remind myself of that and I escort them all outside now. I used to not do that. I used to honestly not even really make an effort to kill them necessarily but I have killed them but I don't anymore and um yeah it took me a while to be able to be comfortable with them I guess in the same way that people fear spiders or snakes but like yeah I I ended up essentially a few years ago meeting someone actually just in a Facebook group. He's just this lovely guy and he um, was really nice and he was an entomologist and um, a very like very wholesome person like a really kind wholesome person who always shared his bug collection like his animals and specimens that he was working with um, and he had like the really the nicest like way of having so much respect for animals like from the insect world that he honestly just really had a, made a very big impression on me not in a way like not through activism or anything I mean although activism does make a major impression on me too but just through like his own love and kindness for insects and it was really nice it actually just it changed my my way of thought about these things and I hadn't really killed a lot of bugs anyways other than mosquitoes and house flies which still don't really have much chance around me because they're terrible bugs but um yeah any kind of a beneficial bug I'm happy to have around there we go okay so that's two journals cut and put in um, there will still be work to do with them before I stitch them but yeah that's what I'm gonna do today so you don't have to just listen to me talk and um, 
cut things on a guillotine. So <laughs> I will probably finish the rest of them off camera and then I really need to work on a bunch of other things. So I will try to make a video tomorrow and I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much. I'm really happy that you subscribed and it's really great to have you hanging out with me while I make things. And I'd love it if you're new and or you're returning, please subscribe. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And all my information about my shop, about everything I do is in the description box. So I hope you have a really lovely, lovely day and I'll talk to you soon.